To me, I think sound is probably the number one way to identify things. Because a lot of times you might be busy doing something in looking at something else, but you can always be hearing. Um, you know, I could be behind an AC unit fixing something and, and I hear like red-shouldered hawks courting or, you know, whatever, you know, just hear different things. Um, so <clears throat> sounds um, are used for a whole lot of things. So I have some different things to kind of show you that I'll show you on the screen here in a minute. But um, some of the ways that animals make sound, okay, would be vocal sacs like on the frog that you caught. You know, they've got the sac here. Some have sacs out to the side of their head. Um, if you ever get a woodcock or snipe, something like that, they do with their wings. Um, they actually will make so sounds with their wings, their feathers. Um, turkey, too, you know, and rough grouse. Um, rattlesnakes with their tail, manatees, you know, sound like they're run out of air and, you know, do that kind of thing. Um, drumming, like in a woodpecker, that's not really a vocalization, but it's still a sound. Um, and there are certain woodpeckers you can identify almost a mile away and you know, hey, that's a yellow-bellied sapsucker because they make a distinctive sound um, and they're doing it with their beaks. And that's like a territorial thing. Um, and then vocal cords, and that would be like, you know, other mammals, birds, frogs, um, the other things. Um, okay, why do they do it? Um, a lot of these little CDs and even tapes, I was going to bring a record, but I didn't have the record anymore. Most of you probably wouldn't even know what that was, right? Um, <clears throat> but they're making a comeback, according to these college kids. Um, so... Um, some of them are uh, to maintain social contact, like right now you might hear owls calling to each other, and they're just maintaining social contact. Yeah, I'm over here. Yep, okay, I'm still here. Um, and then attracting mates, like pretty soon, like already the uh, western kingbirds, they just arrived, and they're not losing any time. They're like, you know, making all kinds of noise um, to attract mates. Um, then there's feeding young repelling rivals, courtship, territorial defense, um, group activities, um, announce food and feeding locations, warning signals, alarms, predator detection. I mean, there's a whole list of things. Um, and let's see. Oh, you, damn, dude. All right, let me see. So if um, this is, uh, okay, so whenever you see Macaulay Library of Nature Sounds, that's actually from Cornell. Um, long ago, when I first got into sounds and bird stuff, okay, there was only a Peterson's record. Dick, you probably had that, right? You probably listened to that, too. Um, but it was just a record, and I remember one of the things on it was Ivory Build Woodpecker. And I remember, like, if I heard one now, I would know it, because I listened to that on that record when I was young. And, like, it's in there, you know? Um, so I'm ready for an ivory-billed woodpecker. <laughs> Even though they say they're extinct, I'm ready, man. Um, but this is, this is kind of cool because it kind of goes over, like, why, you know, some of those things I just did. Um, it's more, I would use this more for teaching, you know, because it, it does all kinds of wild sounds. Um, now, one of the other things that sounds are good for, and I'm going to, uh, one of these days I'm going to have... Um, going to actually have my PowerPoint, but right now I'm doing the iPod thing here. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, play something for you, but I'm going to put this up here. Ooh, good thing I made extra copies of that. Okay, so um, there we go. You didn't think you'd do math tonight. Okay, so let me get it to uh, where I need to be. No, it, it actually works really well. Okay, hold up. Now this thing's going to give me trouble. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so that, that's a snowy tree cricket. Um, so what you would do is count the number. Now this is kind of a complicated one, so I made an easier one. Count the number 
Um, let's see, I wrote it down on here. So you would actually count the number on a snowy tree cricket of calls in um, 15 seconds and then add 40, and that would be the temperature in Fahrenheit. And it is like plus or minus a degree. Um, other people have written, because I, I thought, well, it's for fun, I'll look on the internet. I mean, I mean, some of these equations, this is uh, actually probably a mathematician that got really frustrated or something. Um, but, you know, keep it simple, you know. Um, but then, um, so 15 seconds and then add 40. Some people, you know, uh, say, like, do it 13 seconds and add 40. Well, 15 seconds is easier, you know. Um, and then um, <clears throat> the other one is a Katie did. Now, we don't have the northern true Katie did here, but we do have Katie dids, and I'm sure there's a formula for them, too. Um, I'm going to get the Katie did on here. Of course, I have them by number on a uh, CD, and i got to read the letters on here. So um, let's see. Um, let's see. You know what? I think that's his picture right there, actually. Right there. That's a snowy tree cricket, that one. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of, they're, they're kind of whitish, and, but green, you know. Um, I think we do have some. There's not a lot, but if you go further north, there's, there's a lot further north. Um, okay, so, let's see. Oh, this thing went off on me again. Have you read uh, anything by Eric Stone? Because the first time I ran across this was in uh, Eric Stone's sketchbook. Um, he had farmer's, um, this is a weather book, right? It's farmer's methods of telling temperature. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is California. one of So these are especially more in the eastern forests. Um, you'll hear these. We do have katydids, and we'll have outbreaks of them, but they're not quite the same. So if these, okay, so their formula is a little different. If you take the number of these in a minute, minus 19 divided by 3 plus 60, then you get the temperature. <laughs> that one's harder to remember for me. But, um, <clears throat> but it is really cool that you can do things like that. Um, one of the other things I like to use sound for is this particular one. And I want to see if you guys have heard this at your house and not known what this thing is. Because this animal is maybe about the size of my thumbnail. Um, and this is it. You need to play. Oh, wait. Yeah, make it louder. And you may hear, you may be sitting on your deck or something, you'll hear it for like two minutes and then it'll just shut up and it won't do anything again. But it's a cliff chirping frog. They're all over the place here, but you just, you don't see them very often. Um, so that one you, you can True look knows. up. Um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> now, if you were going to go on a trip somewhere, like I used to do, you might grab these and, you know, if you're going to go to the Rocky Mountains, you can... Uh, get these and it's a three CD set and it I used to drive my wife and kids crazy because before any trip this is all I would play and they got <laughs> really tired of it um, but in that they did learn a lot of stuff and later my my daughter did do the World Series of Birding with me and stuff like that because she knew her sounds pretty well but um, you know things like this they're very helpful because in there it will also give you like different examples of the birds so that you're hearing, you know, it'll say in the book, hey, this is what it sounds like if it's, 
you know, courting, or this is the call, this is the song. Um, and then there's <clears throat> these, which are really cool because, um, and I like this guy because he's got really awesome recordings. But this is um, Calls of Frogs and Toads, and a lot of times he'll give you some extra help in identifying what they're doing and stuff like that. And I don't know, just growing up, you know, with that sound, it's just, he's funny. He cracks me up. Um, <clears throat> and then if you want to learn, um, these are probably the best ones to learn. So this one will do 85 species, and I think this one does like 80 five or something like that also. Um, and it's to learn the sounds and they'll give you little mnemonic devices to use. Um, like I have, I've made a bunch. Um, some of mine, there's a couple I can't read because it sounds like that to me, but I won't say it to other people because it just isn't quite right, okay? <laughs> Plus if my wife, it gets back to her that I said that, she'll slap me. Um, so some of them I might just say, um, you know, like on some of these, I'll just say, like for a mallard, I just put down characteristic quack because it sounds like a quack, you know. Um, but, <laughs> you know, and that's what's in your head when you're growing up. But there's a gadwall sounds a little bit different. Um, it sounds like a quack, but it just might be quack. It's just a shortened quack. And that has helped me to learn, okay, and I got that down, okay. For you, you may say, that is really stupid. <laughs> There's no way on earth I'm doing that. So you need to make up something for yourself. Um, some of these, I might describe them, and some of these songs, um, like if you read in it, here, if you read in a book, um, here, so for this bird, it's a Connecticut warbler. One, you know, we're not going to really see here, um, but it, here he describes it as a chippy, choppy, chippy, chippy, choppy, choppy, or it could be chippadilly, chippadilly, chippadilly. So to you, that may be like, that's really ridiculous, right? <laughs> so you need to make up your own little devices for some of these songs. Um, a prothonotary warbler, um, it has the same sound. Um, and see, I'm not much of a music person, but I have a good music ear, but... It's like um, seven times it says tweet, 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 all on the same pitch. Um, and they sound like the same all the time. So that one's kind of nice. Um, but not all of them are like that. Like Golden Cheek Warblers, they have like three different songs. And it's like, oh, I know that song. And then you hear another one over there, and it's like, I don't know what that is, but it's a Golden Cheek Warbler. Um, so you, you have to kind of learn some of them and the differences. Um, I will read you. Okay, so flycatchers, you guys are all familiar with flycatchers, right? So they all look brown. There's nothing distinctive about them, okay? Um, like how many of you have Phoebes at your house or know you have Phoebes? Okay, so <clears throat> that one sounds like it says Phoebe, and that's really nice, you know? I love when they say their name. Um, <clears throat> now, a least flycatcher, that's Smaller than a Phoebe, you know, it doesn't pump its tail like a Phoebe, and it has a little wider eye ring, but you may not see that. That one says Chebec. Now, a yellow-bellied flycatcher says Chebunk. So <laughs> you got to, like, be careful there. Um, willow flycatcher says Fitzbew. Alder says Zamphir. Um, Acadian sounds like it's saying Pizza or Wick Up, you know, and it's, like, emphatic. Um, and then a favorite, this is for John, okay? Olive Side Flycatcher says, quick, three beers. <laughs> um, and it really, if you ever hear one, okay, now that I said that, I hope one flies over and lands, you will pee your pants. <laughs> because it sounds just like, quick, three beers. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, really? He said that. And in some of these... Um, um, it's called an olive-sided flycatcher. Um, they, they actually will nest. I've seen them nesting in like um, bogs and stuff up in the Adirondacks and things like that. Um, but like, you know, Lang Elliott and some of these other guys, they'll go, and this, this drab character sounds like he's asking for a malted beverage, you know? <laughs> so, you know, I think they have fun with it too. Um, 
Okay, then there's, um, there's a lot of other birds, and I'm going to, uh, let me share with you the, um, let's see, we want to do, let's see, hill country birds. See, at least I made a playlist of hill country birds here. I'll be able to find this faster. Um, okay. And <clears throat> now, all of you know the different doves and stuff um, that sing around you? All right, let's see. All right, here we go. Um, Chuck Will's Widow, and it has Whippoorwill after it. Chuck Will's Widow. A lot of people hear that, and they might say Whippoorwill, but this one is saying Chuck Will's Widow. Say, listen. This is about how long they call when they start going. So this is Whippoorwill. So you hear the difference between them? <clears throat> That's why he's getting really excited right there. I won't speculate what's going on. <clears throat> um, okay. If you live barred owl. If you live near a river or something like that, you may get these. And even if you go down kind of like Choke Canyon, you know, if you go down there, it's kind of deserty down there, but because the Rio Frio goes down there and you get some trees and stuff, you'll hear this. Hi. So this one sounds like it's who cooks for you, who cooks for you all. with a Chuck Will's widow calling in the background. <laughs> so that tells me this guy, he could have been a Choke Canyon, but this could have been recorded in East Texas, too. Um, all right, let's see, other birds. If um, all of you have probably heard this in your backyard and you weren't you exactly sure well. what it was. So nighttime is my favorite time whenever uh, we would do these birding events and stuff. I mean, I just, that's all I wanted to do is mainly go, I start at midnight, I started at midnight because it was just too much fun. Um, now, barn owl, that's one that you're only going to maybe hear out barn owl. on the flats somewhere. But that one, you hear that, you better have your bladder empty because... <laughs> I had one fly over and do that in a marsh while I'm listening to rails, and it flew right over our heads. That, that is freaky. Um, all right, is there any particular bird while I have this to birds that you want to hear or, yes? Scissor tail fly catcher. Okay, all right. Scissor. Okay, so they're in now. They're in slightly. There's not a ton of them yet, but they're, they're here. Oh, really? Okay, so a bunch might have come in, yeah. I'm waiting for them at the apartment complex I'm at, but I haven't gotten a bunch yet. <clears throat> Here, and I'll, I'll compare that to a western kingbird, because the scissor tail flycatcher is kind of a kingbird. Okay. Western Kingbird. <clears throat> now, a way to remember this, for those of you that remember what these things are right here, is that tapes? Um, <clears throat> okay, remember a tape, if you took it and you rewind, you know, you rewind <laughs> and then you put it back, it may get, uh, 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 and that, that's kind of what it sounds like. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, okay, yes. Uh, this is actually, I just compiled stuff, but if you want to get an app for your phone, 
I, my wife has it, so I don't have it, but there's a bunch of different apps. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to do a Green Heron real quick, and then I'm going to shut up. Okay. Green Heron. See, that isn't much there, but they make a bunch of other sounds. That's usually, if they're flying away, they'll do that. That sounds like they flop, swallowed a frog sideways or something, but...